So yesterday we spoke a little bit about components and JSX, but I think components are still not very clear to a lot of people. So I wanted to spend a bit more time and revisit that today. And essentially I want to look at it in the context of CodeFlix, because by now we're all quite familiar with the CodeFlix project. We've at least done some of the tasks towards it. So basically you should, at the moment for most of you, before you've created any components, you're going to end up with some code that looks a little bit like this. You're just going to be inside your app.js folder. You're welcome again to follow along with your own code to see the similarities and differences if you want. And inside of our main function, our app function, or our app component I should say, we are essentially rendering a couple of rows if you've got that far with putting it in the three by three sorry the two by three layout and in each row you're displaying three images and the end result of this should look something like that right two rows of three movie covers now Looking at this code, can anyone see any initial problems and think, oh, this is a bit smelly. I don't really like this code in any way. What do you think? Is that, is that going to be very maintainable long term? Um, Imagine we had 100 movie covers in this one file. Is, is that going to be very maintainable? No. no, it's going to get very, very messy, right? We're going to have a long long list of divs and already I get down here and I've got div div main div and there's lots of nesting going on yeah and it's not that readable for me even with just the six images and hopefully you feel the same so let's look at some ways that we can improve that well can anyone think of a, an obvious solution based on what I said we're going to talk about yeah so we're going to create a component and what does it make sense to create a component of? Well, that would be the section of code that is the most repeated. Yeah, at the moment this code to me is not very dry. Does anyone know what the acronym dry stands for? Yeah, don't repeat yourself. So it looks to me like this from line 16 to line 19 and 20 to 23, they're almost identical, right? We've, we've got a div, we've got a header, then we've got an image, then we close the div, right? It's very, very similar. The things that are different are, of course, the actual text. One refers to Black Mirror, one refers to the Blake Breaking Bad show, yeah? That's the only thing that is changing. So, rather than repeat these four lines each time, I'm going to create a component that returns these four lines of JSX or these four, these three elements, yeah? A div, a header, and an image element. How do I do that? What's the first step? Can anyone remind me? If not, I'll tell you, but can anyone remind Let's me? Let's create the component first. Let's create the component first, and where does that component go? Do I stick it at the bottom of app.js, or? Just before the export default. Just before the export default. How about I just create a brand new file for now? Is that okay as well? We, we could create a new function within app.js, We've already got 50 lines of code in here. Let's just move it to a new file so that we keep each file quite small and maintainable, yeah? So I'm gonna create a new file to house my component. That for now is just gonna sit next to my app.js, yeah? So I'll go to my little GUI up here, I'll create a new file, and I'm gonna create a new component called tvshow.js. All right, all good. So at the moment, that's blank. And then we've got two ways we can create a component in React. We mentioned them yesterday. What? Function. Function and class, fantastic. What was the simpler of the two? Function. function. Let's create a, just a plain old JavaScript function for now then. How do I do that? Function. The function keyword. Let's give it a name. I've called my file TV show. That's pretty descriptive. Let's just stick with that. Because it's a component, I'm gonna use what? A capital letter, yeah? Usually we'd, we'd name it with a lowercase in camel case for JavaScript, but we want to say this is a component, so I'm going to give it a capital. 
It might take some arguments, so we'll get into that later. I'll just put the brackets there for now. And then I'll just uh, encapsulate my function, yeah? Inside I'll put my, my code. Now we want to return something. We want this function to output something. In this case, what do we want it to output? The repeated code, yeah? We want it to output this repeated code. So I'm just going to copy that for now. And stick it in there. So this is absolutely fine in React. We can return JSX elements, yeah? That is not a problem. But if we do want to do that, what do we need as the very first line in our file? Import React. Is there anything else? Yeah, nice. So, whenever you're using JSX or just something that belongs, well, it doesn't belong, but if you don't just want it to be a plain old JavaScript function, you want it to use components or you want it to use something else that is associated with React, this very first line, we need to have import React from React. And if in doubt, just put it for now, and it will be grey if you're not actually using it. Yeah, but if in doubt, just put that at all of the top at the top of all of your React files for now. Okay, so then this will enable us to create a proper component that React is going to be be able to render. Without this line, we would have run into some errors further down. Uh, semicolon is probably a good idea, right? I, I, you'll notice throughout this course that I'm very, very bad with my semicolons, but um, yeah, please practice it for your elegance. You're doing it on purpose test, right? That's what I'm doing. Thank you, Farage. That's what I meant to say. I'm doing it on purpose to just check that you're paying attention. All right. So it looks like we've created a function. It should return this code. How do I then make that code available to my app.js file? Let's go back to app.js. So we definitely have to import it, but before we can import something, what's at the bottom down here? In export. Yeah, so they work together, right? You export the thing that you want to import into another file. So this is where the modules... No, no, no. So inside of app.js, which I just clicked on, we're exporting the function within that file, yeah, which is called app. If we're inside of TV show and we want to make that available to other files, we type export default, because there's only one of them, it's our default export. And what's the name of the thing that I want to export? Oh, sure. TV show, yeah. How about if I put it the function? Okay, yeah, and there's, there's another option. All right, there's a bit more of a shorthand option. I like to be explicit like this, definitely when we're learning, but if you didn't want to do that, you can, as Armai correctly said, just put that, export default function. Yeah, so what, whatever you prefer. So you can only import things that were exported before? Yes, you can only import things that were exported from a file. Let's try it, right? Let's, let's not put the export there. And let's try importing it without having an export statement. What do I want to import, guys? TV show. TV show. Where is it located? Same, same folder. folder, yeah? So because it's the same folder, I can do dot forward slash. That says it's in the same folder. And look, it's actually listed all of the files there that are available for me to import. And we can now see that TV show is there. But if we try doing it, I think already we've got an error down here, right? Uh, yeah, I, oh, that's for a different reason. All right, let's 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 fix that one first. So it's looking for the Black Mirror image in this fi file, and it hasn't got it. So let's just fix that error first. Going to get around these in a different way in a second. But OK, TV show is defined, but never used. All right, let's, let's try using it. So we want to, anyway, we want to import TV show, right, from the actual file location. 
and then let's assume I've successfully imported this even though I haven't got an export statement so I probably haven't but if I have successfully imported it how would I then get it to render inside of my app how would I get it to you Yeah, so we can reuse any component elsewhere in our code base by just putting it as a tag. Now, what did we get rid of? We got rid of Black Mirror, right? So if I just comment out Black Mirror, I'll go back to my app just to show you what's happened. So now we've only got two images on that first row and three on the second, right? So Black Mirror has disappeared. We're going to try and get it back by using our component, yeah, instead of all of that code. Oops, that's a kind of. So, as Ahmed correctly said, we can just use a tag. And our tag this time is called TV Show, because that is the name we have given it up here. If we called it Boris, or oh, even Boris, like that, then we'd have to call it Boris, yeah? And it has to be a capital, so that wouldn't work anyway. Yeah, components must be a capital letter. Yeah, so it, it doesn't actually matter what name you give it, as long as the import variable name matches up with whatever you are trying to render. I'm going to call it TV show to avoid confusion. And then we can make it self-closing. Make a self-closing tag. Oh, but now look at our error message when we've actually tried to render that component. It says down here, attempted import error. TV show does not contain a default export. Huh? No, no, no. We, we, we haven't exported it. Yeah? There's no export default in this function. We put it there and then we removed it to see what the error was. Yeah? The thing is that the errors are pretty clear. The errors nowadays are pretty clear. If you'd been developing 10 years ago, you wouldn't have had these nice errors. But nowadays, yes, you're, you're lucky in the sense that the errors are quite descriptive. I think it's unique for the app, isn't it? Is this free error is unique for the app, isn't it? Uh, so, yeah, I guess as part of your Create React app, you, you've got default error messages that they've they've set for you and they're descriptive yeah uh, part of the JavaScript language as well right now you've got detailed uh, error messages all, all things like that yeah lots of environments themselves have improved over the years and, and now are properly handling errors and giving us lots of hints as opposed to just saying error <laughs> and then that's it right and you don't know what, what to do with it so you also get the line number, I think, as well, right? Where it was? No, no not in this case, but uh, a lot of the times you get the line number and the character number as well, so you can really, really pinpoint it. Uh, yeah, so anyway, th let's go with this, this method, export default. That should now get rid of that error message. Hopefully now, if we go back to our app, Black Mirror has reappeared, yeah? And hopefully you can also see that, what do you prefer? in the app.js, just to make app.js readable. Do you prefer line 18 to 21, or do you prefer line 17 only? <laughs> Silly question? Yeah? <laughs> okay. So that's one benefit of a component. If, however, I want to replace all six of my shows in two rows, perhaps, like this, I'm going to comment out all the other movies. What do you think has happened at the moment? You all have Black Mirror, Black Mirror. Yeah, Black Mirror. We're going to have six Black Mirrors, yeah? Not our intended result. Uh, I've done something weird again with my commenting. Let's see what we got. One, we've got two... I've, yeah, I don't want that one. Is that it? 
I think that's good. All right, let's go back to our app. Whoa, someone likes Black Mirror a lot. <laughs> so yeah, that's, it's a good step in the sense of we've got rid of, sorry, I keep going back to that. Um, it's a good step in the sense that we've got rid of uh, all of this commented code and I'm now just actually gonna be really, where am I gonna be really, I'm gonna keep one of them just so I've got a template. In fact, I've got a template in my TV show components. So I'm just actually gonna delete them, right? Just be brave. You might wanna be less aggressive when you're doing it for the first time. <laughs> so now I've got, you can clearly see that I've got two rows with three TV shows inside of each one, right? Uh, let's just get all of those over. By the way, if you don't know how to do that, highlight multiple lines at once, on my machine it's alt and shift and then just click on the rows that you want to indent or type something in and then you can edit multiple lines at once yeah so alt shift and then click is that little shortcut another productivity one i think it's the same on most computers but don't quote me on that all right so now that's looking a lot more readable i think our app.js file yeah i'm pretty pretty happy with that but we need to get around the problem of displaying the correct title and the correct image for each TV show. Any suggestions on how we might go about that? Go back to the TV show component, okay. Why are we I don't even want to do that, actually. I'm going to delete Black Mirror from here in a second, and I'm going to keep them in app.js, just to show you how we can also import the uh, information about the images into the TV show component from app as well. Yeah, so I'm actually not going to do that, but that is one way we could at least access... Black Mirror will disappear. I, I'm going to delete line two. You yeah? Need to create a render. Yeah, I mean. Mm, renders only for class-based components. I want to stick to um, a, a functional component for now. Okay, if you're gonna delete that picture, then don't you have to create other file, other components for all the pictures? Okay, I, I have a question for you first, right? To to the group. So what about if you do like JSON or something like that? No, I don't need JSON. Don't need JSON. There's a, a React thing that is very very useful in this case. I'm gonna go into DevTools very quickly just to give you a. A different analogy. So if we wanted to have a dynamic function which I could put any message in here and the function will output different things based on the message that I give it, how do I usually do that? You pass an argument. I pass an argument to my function, to the function. right? Yeah so in here, oops, let's just call it message right? I'm struggling to spell argument, so let's just call it a message. Um, so we pass in a message argument, and then whatever we put in here, and run the code, we will get, I'm a dynamic function that receives a variable input. My current input is hello, right? As well as, well as saying a variable input, the React speak for this is, I'm a dynamic function that receives a prop. Yeah, I receive a property or a prop, a props object. And this is uh, React speak for some inputs that we pass into a component. Yeah, so props are the same for, for React components as arguments are to JavaScript functions. Yeah, so let's see if we can take that similar design pattern and pass some inputs into our component. Uh, let's go back to the code. So in my TV show, it's a function. So how do I pass an argument to the function? I just type something in there. I could give it any name, but the convention in React is to call it props. So these are gonna be properties of an object that we're gonna pass to our React component. And this way, we're going to make our React component dynamic. Yeah, we're going to use this exact same code, 
once I get rid of Black Mirror and things like that. We're going to use this exact same code for um, all of our six shows. Yeah, we're not going to have to create six functions. It's just one function. But this, for example, the title is not going to be hard coded, set as Black Mirror. It's going to be set as part of the props object. Props.name would work. Props.title, perhaps. Yeah. And that, once we give our actual component in app.js some inputs, will render the title. We'll do that in a second. Here, this needs to be dynamic as well. What could I call that? It's got to have props in it, but props dot. Yeah, props dot image, right? That would work. There's going to be a slight error with this at the moment. Is this rendering as JavaScript or as text? As, the text. as text at the moment. Yes. So what do we need? We need to tell it it's JavaScript code by wrapping it in curly braces. That's how we do it inside of JSX. Yeah. And the alt as well. We want to be dynamic. And just to make it easy for now, I just want to use the title again. Yeah. So how would I put the title in there as the alt? Curly braces as well. And what? where is it going to come from? It's going to come from the props object. And let's use props.title again. Yeah. Now at the moment, this isn't going to work, right? Because we haven't given those inputs. We haven't put anything here, right? Hello was our input before. We haven't specified that yet. So we're still missing that last little step. But it's nice to set up your component first, I think. Yeah, we can clearly see that we need to define two properties, one called title and one called image. All right. But I'm now not using that black mirror, so let's get rid of it. I'll just show you the app because it's going to be severely broken, but uh, it's good to see that, right? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. Whoa. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay though, this, this code is set up. It's very close to uh, being complete. Now class name is actually called well, a property, yeah? It's a property of the div tag in JSX. So I can follow this syntax to pass properties into my component, except I don't want it to be called class name I want it to be called, no, I want one called title, right? We use title. And we also used one called, can you remember? IMG. IMG, yeah. So these now, I'm setting my two properties, one called title, one called image, and I'm going to give them a value. That value, sorry? It's the title of the TV series. Yeah, exactly the title of the TV series and because I forget what order they're in I'm going to do the images first so the images are set as variables right here they are there's black mirror image you might have different names for yours it's not a problem whoops now I'm going to yeah I'll do the title first Yeah, okay, let's see if that one works first, right? Hey, yeah. look, now we've got our black mirror back, and even, is it, oh, it's not actually on your screen. Let me zoom out a little bit. No, that's not going to work either. Uh, can I do it this way? Can you, no, you still can't see it, hovering up. It's because it's just cutting off the bottom of my screen, unfortunately, on the projector. But trust me, the overlay is working and the title is popping up. I'll tell you what, let's change the CSS so the title goes at the top, yeah? How would I do that? App.css. So at the moment, we've set it to go uh, bottom zero. So let's instead, oops, make it not bottom, but top. Yeah? 
And now my overlay should be at the top, right? So it's working, yeah? Let's repeat that now for each of our six movies and that's essentially task seven done. And then I'll open up to questions, right? Because there's a lot that we did there. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna copy this a few times. Okay, so again, we're going to end up with six black mirrors, hopefully, yeah. But this time, let's change them. So just one by one. That one's going to be breaking bad. Notice how they're changing from being greyed out yeah. to full colour. So that shows that we're now actually using these variables in our code. Game of Thrones. You might have different movies, of course, if you personalized it a little bit. Walking Dead. All right, and then I can change each of my titles. Oops. Oh, my God, I really can't type under pressure, obviously. Why and the last one finally I know Game of Thrones is spelt wrong, I will fix that. Okay. Final result. Is that oh indentation? Da, da, da. And hopefully if you manage to install that extension actually, let's see whether it will work for me. So if you manage to install prettier format document does it for you, right? Sorts out all the indentation for you. So that was one of the productivity tips that I gave yesterday. Uh, what do you think? Is that looking a bit more readable than what we had at the start? Yes. It's quite nice, right? Six shows, two rows, pretty clear. So that's a really good use of components. And then if, so, if somehow, oh, we'll do that in a second. Let's, let's check it works first, right? So now we've got our six images back with our overlays coming at the top. Yeah. Nice, looking good, looking good. So now, if it was working, and then suddenly, I don't know, let's say we do something weird and we manage to break our code, and we find that, oh, hang on, the overlay's not working. Damn, why, why are my overlays not working? So before, if all of my overlays weren't working, I might have to go in and play around with all six overlays six times. Right. Now, exactly, one component. Realize that I've spelt my props wrong. Now they all work again. Yeah, so hopefully you can see how one little bug you only have to change now once rather than in six places, or that might have been 100 places. Yeah, a lot, lot more. Um, maintainable, a lot more scalable as well. Is there any Shop. kind of uh, advantage of having just one extremely long code instead of different files? So is, is there any advantage of having one extremely long uh, file rather than lots of small ones? Uh, if you adhere to and you're an uh, evangelist of component-based architecture, then no, right? <laughs> but no, I, mean, I, I can't see back, a good, good use case for it. Back in the days, they did it, I don't know. Yeah, back in the day, maybe it wasn't as easy to import and export files, perhaps. Or if you found that your code base over here was just getting crazily nested with a huge number of different components and files, then maybe you would have increased the size a bit of each file, but yeah, for now, I think the modern approach tends to be most things are broken, broken into small manageable components. And then that, that even extends further to some things like microservices, yeah? So rather than having one big app, we have lots of smaller apps that we effectively bolt together on the server 
and we run them each as a, an individual microservice because then some part of our app breaks and we don't have to check the whole app code base, we just check the microservice that was responsible for that part of our app. Yeah, so that component-based architecture is now extended to the actual app itself as apps get bigger and bigger and more complicated over time. So I think it's here to stay for a while, that, that way of designing, as opposed to no, one massive app or one massive file. No, no, what I mean is maybe, I, I have no idea if this increases the size and maybe before why, why does it increase the size? It's less, no, no, less it's lines of code, right? We've actually written there, yeah. less lines of code. Or maybe it's more intense of the CPU, I have no idea. Maybe slightly, but JavaScript is pretty fast, right? At the end of the day, it's, it's just JavaScript, it's just rendering text. Uh, React itself is using that virtual DOM here that I spoke about, so we're not actually having to update uh, the web so much. In fact, I, I Googled it this morning, right? Just in case I, I found a good link for you, and I just said React virtual. DOM, yeah, and it came up with a lovely little de definition there. You know, in a nutshell, why do we why do we use the virtual DOM? Let me read that. Yeah, so it, it detects these state and prop changes for us, and then uses its efficient algorithm to compare versions of its own version of the DOM, and then it batches all of these updates. Yeah, so rather than every single little change in your application that happens, we're redrawing the whole DOM each time, which was what the, um, the old style web pages used to have to do, redraw the whole page again from scratch, right? That, that hitting the refresh button, you know, it's blank, isn't it, for a few seconds and then the page comes. So React doesn't do that, it just updates things in, in real time um, and it's a lot more efficient way to, to render or re-render the DOM, a better experience for the user. So. Virtual DOM, yeah, good, good React interview question, yeah. Why do we use React? What improvements does it offer over traditional development? And uh, Are you able to ask that kind of question? yeah, absolutely. If you're going for a React role, you should know why you're using React, right? That's one of the key reasons. We'll, we'll touch on other reasons throughout the course. Did I say you have to use a virtual DOM? Is that any answer for that? Uh, maybe they might say, well, "What's the virtual DOM?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then hopefully you can de defend it a little bit. Yeah, so there's one article there, right, to research a little bit further and understand why you're using the tools that we've, we've suggested you use in this course. Uh, anyway, back to, I guess, just components and props and any questions from you guys of what we've gone through today? Um, just a quick one on the export case. I know you want to do like export yeah. Sure, yep. So we can either write it in line like that, just prepend the function with an export default, or if you just want to define your functions all over your file and then maybe export only one of them, let's say we had uh, another function here as well called don't export. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you get the idea, right? It's not going to be called that, but. Which one do we want to export? Don't export or TV show? What do you think? Probably TV show, right? So I just have to name the function like that. And that should also work again. Yeah, so all working. If I mucked up the name, then we go back to our code. Yeah, fails to compile. So and if, and if there were two, two functions that you did want to install from that file, yep. then would you, just, would you do it online or would you just add the program? Yeah, so we wouldn't, well, we might have an, an export default, but we need just an export statement. Okay. Right, we can export, don't export, yeah. yeah, and so forth. Oh, am I doing it wrong? Let's have a look. Uh, declaration of statement expected. Do we have to do it all in one? I forget now, to be honest, but uh, Ricardo will do a workshop on modules uh, very shortly and we'll cover exporting multiple things. Uh, and then you will have a named export default, which you can call whatever you want. And then 
if you have, you've probably seen this already, right? There's a second import inside of curly braces. You might have seen it up here with the React one. If you were using class-based components on the videos, it said something like component. It said something like that. Yeah. So React is the default export in this file, and component is a non-default export in that file, right? And that's how we can get multiple imports from the same file. And then, unfortunately, I've just forgot the syntax at the moment for multiple exports from uh, the same file. Yeah. You know, all those import files, yeah. 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 So you're saying if you end up with a huge amount of imports in yeah. one file, um, so hopefully, again, we're going to get rid of all these image imports in the future and make them yeah. dynamic as well. So hopefully if you follow component-based architecture properly, yeah. you won't end up with a huge, huge amount of imports in one single file, right? Because uh, ideally, the biggest, the biggest one's probably going to be in your app.js, right? That's where most things are feeding yeah. into because it's the highest level component. Uh, but things further down should hopefully be more manageable enough, yeah? And it's not a big deal at the end of the day. You can just any component there you can just do control click and that will take you directly to that file so you don't have to look in all your your code base for it i mean look i, I haven't got tv show open now and i see that tv show is a component i'm importing i just hit control click and it opens it for me and i can edit that code base if if there was an error in there so it's not too bad it's not yeah. too bad yeah, it will happen though yeah you're going to end up with big Basis. Any other questions? So if, uh, if we use a class component, yep. will be, the code will be more um, longer? A little bit, yeah. We can do it quickly if you want. Yeah, so not function, let's have a class. This time, we can't pass props in this way, so that's where the real challenge comes. Yeah, we can't just pass it in like that. Uh, we have extends react dot component and then we need an additional render stick all our return inside of there I know I'm going quick guys but it's just to answer a question you don't have to follow it exactly but we still haven't got props right so that's the issue now how do I get my props into it we can't, unfortunately, just put it in there, which would be nice. Well, or can we? No, I didn't think we could, but no, right. Cannot be pre property of undefined. So what we need to do is we need to create a constructor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've got your constructor function. And then inside of there, we need to call super. And then we also need to no, we're not setting any state, so that should be it. And then we can pass our props in here. And then props is also not defined because it becomes this dot props dot title and this dot props dot image because they belong to the class. Props is not defined. Oh, one more. And this dot props dot title now hopefully works again all right what do you prefer <laughs> again yeah yeah I mean, obviously the function is better i mean in terms of simple to write yeah well in what scenarios do you need to use either I mean, yeah so we we again spoke about this a little bit yesterday and and we said that historically you had to use classes if you wanted to use the state object yeah, which we haven't covered yet. Okay. Nowadays, we have something called React hooks that allow us to use state inside of functional components. Okay. So that is the way things are going. Yeah, the future is hooks. I think is what Ahmed eloquently put it as. Right, future is hooks. 
<laughs> it's good to know both patterns at this stage because you will see a lot of code still written so as class-based components. So that you can change it if you have to or you can identify it. So that you can just work on your company's existing code base when you yeah. get your job oh, and then and then change it to hooks if, if you want, yeah. Well, if they want as well, right? <laughs> they, they might not. If no, one, if no one else in the company knows hooks, then they probably don't appreciate you changing all their code to, to being uh, hook-based. There we go. So I'm, I'm giving you a couple of ways there. So. Any other questions? Under the hood, it's, it's the same thing, right? It's just creating a function. Class is still just creating a function or, or functions. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can repeat the steps quickly. So let's call all of these ones in row two. There's, there's no reason to do it because they're identical, but let's just call them TV show two. Yeah. Do you want me to repeat the, the prop steps no, as well, or you, you you want me to leave leave the props? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the first would be, let's create a new component file. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> first would be create a new component file. If I don't do it, I might forget the steps. But hey, um, and then inside of that new file, you're going to want to create a new component. Yeah. So this is our new component here that we've created. Make sure on line one you have import React from React because we're creating a React component. At the end of your file, make sure you've got an export default or prepend your class or function with export default. Either or, yeah, not both. Then once you've done that, make sure in the file that you want to use your component, you import it. And then wherever you want to use that component, make sure you give it a tag So a tag is just anything enclosed in this less than symbol and the greater than symbol. To make it self-closing, make sure you put the forward slash there at the end. If I didn't have that forward slash, that's the same as writing a closing tag explicitly. That would also work. Oh, you can't see that on the screen, that's annoying. Can you see if I put it up there? Almost. And then last step, if you need your uh, component to be dynamic, which you probably will for most components, make sure you set it up for passing in props. That's how you do it for a class-based component. You'll need a constructor passing in props and then use this dot props to reference the props object. For a functional component, it's quite a bit easier. and should be familiar to you now from your beginner JavaScript training. Look at how much I had to write and change. I think we're back to normal. Let's actually just briefly have a look at props. Because I've just been saying it's an object, right? And maybe you understand what I mean by that, but maybe it's not clear. Let's try and see it visually. 
And of course the last step, make sure you actually pass in those props as well, yeah? And the name of the individual prop must match whatever object property you're trying to reference, yeah? Must be the same thing, doesn't work otherwise. If I just inspect this now, we should in our console, yeah, let's only do it once so that we, uh, I'll tell you what, I can probably do it the other way around. Okay, so in our console here, if I refresh the page, we're hopefully going to get a props object. And we've got one for each component. Yeah, because in our code base, what did we have? In our app.js, we had six components. Yeah, so what has happened? It's trying to render this file, run this code. On line 17, it gets here. So it jumps over to this different file, runs all of that once, and then comes back to app.js. Oh look, another component. Jump back here, run it all again. And it does that six times to render each movie. So we've actually got six console logs and each time it's rendered, well, it's said that console.log props returns this. So can we see that this is an object? It's wrapped in curly braces. It's got a title, colon, value, comma, image, colon, another string value. Yeah, so this here is our props object. Yeah, so we've logged props. Can we call it something different? Yes, you can call Yeah, any old name. Refresh the page. Still works. We still have the same object. But of course, if you change the name, make sure you change all references to it as well. Which is why I used Control D. If you're not aware of that shortcut, Control D highlights um, all instances of the, the same bit of text that you've highlighted. Yeah. You have to press Control D multiple times to highlight it as many times as you want. Uh, but convention is props, right? So just stick to props for now and then you'll learn what props is. It's just an object that we can pass from one component to another and make it dynamic, essentially. Yeah? yeah. Helpful? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. No worries, we will stop it there.